And I've seen fire and I've seen rain Seen sunny days I thought would never end Seen lonely times when I could not find a friend Hey there friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and I'm excited to show you how to play the song Fire and Rain by James Taylor, an absolute classic. Now, uh, you can jump ahead if you know what you're looking for. I'll teach you each part of the song, and I'll teach you the most beginner-friendly way to play each of these sections, and then I'll dial things up to sort of show you how James Taylor does it. So no matter what your skill level is, you will be in good shape with this lesson. So uh, I have the timestamps there, you can jump ahead. Now, a few quick resources for you I wanna call out. One, of course, is the song sheet. This is an absolute labor of love, uh, six pages, is print friendly. Page one will obviously give you the lyrics and everything to follow along as if you're sort of playing this live, right? But the other pages will go deep on the chord shapes, the finger picking technique, the progressions, tabs, you know, simplified tabs versus some more advanced ones. And then on page six, I'll sort of give you a summary of each section, which is a great thing to practice along with. So you can get this, it's officially licensed. And I also have a few instructional PDFs, right? These are available to members of my Patreon page. These are things like I have a chord guide for this song where it looks at the chord shapes and shows you a few of the exercises that I came up with to sort of help you get fluent with these chords and with some of the transitions that you're gonna to need to do in this song. It's literally what I was practicing the first few days. I also have another PDF on just general finger picking technique. If you're getting started to this or you wanna know the difference between Travis picking, which this song does not use, versus the approach James Taylor has going where you sort of have one finger per string, right? Um, that is there as well. And then finally, I have a play along cover of this song. It's available to members. Uh, it's two different playthroughs. One is me singing with the lyrics on screen. You can sort of follow along. And then the second one is a guitar only. There's no singing and I play it at a very slow tempo. So that way you can follow along, steady beat, and you can sort of work up to being uh, able to play it like James Taylor does, which I am not there yet, but it's been a fun few weeks of learning. So anyway, it's my pleasure to share all this with you. Let's get into the lesson. Uh, jump ahead if you know which part you're looking for, and all the stuff I mentioned you can find on my website, playsongnotes.com. Check it out and uh, search for fire and rain, and you'll be in good shape. But with that said, let's get into it, and I'll see you all on the other side. Let's go. All right, friends, so we're gonna kick this one off looking at both the intro to this song as well as the verse. And the reason I'm sort of bringing these up at the same time is they use the exact same chord shapes. So we learned those chord shapes once, and then we're going to apply them to the intro tab, which I'll show you, as well as the verse tab, which is similar. It's actually a bit easier than the intro. Um, but again, I wanna start with these chord shapes because we just have to learn these once and they'll apply to both. Now, a quick thing about the chord shapes, um, a really quick note here about James Taylor's finger style approach to this song. It's important that you know this for the entire lesson. The way he's going to uh, approach the chords is as follows, right? When you're, your right hand, your finger picking hand over here, the way it's gonna work is whenever you take a chord, the thumb, your right thumb, is gonna play the bass note of that chord. So if we took an A major chord, right? Open, second, 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 open. It's five strings right here, but we're not gonna strum it. What he's gonna do is the thumb is gonna sort of go on the bass note of that chord, right? The fifth string in this case. And then these three fingers right here are sort of gonna be assigned to strings. So for the A major, because it's five strings, we can't play all the strings at once. So we're gonna have to choose. Do you wanna do the bass note and then the second, third, and fourth string? Right, that's one way you could do it. That's a valid way to do it. And James Taylor does that in a few places. But you also could play the same chord by taking these three fingers and putting them on the first, second, and third string. Okay, so whether you played A like this or like this, both of them are valid, right? Um, and let's look at some other chords really quick. It, this first chord in the intro. I'm gonna talk, whoops. I'm gonna talk about this chord in a second. This is another voicing of A major. But the same deal. Bass notes played with the right thumb, and these three fingers play the thinnest three strings. Now, um, every chord you play is going to follow this, this, this pattern. So all the tabs I'm going to show you going forward, just please understand that the thumb, your right thumb is gonna be playing the bass note, and then these three fingers should kind of be assigned to the strings uh, that are tabbed out for you. So I wanted to call that out. Uh, it's important to understand, and this is on page two of my song sheet. And I, of course, I do recommend the other lesson I've made talking about this sort of style of finger picking where your fingers are assigned to strings. I have lots of other lessons that use that technique, which I link to 
too as well. So it's a good, just well-rounded guitarist skill to have to understand that technique. Okay, so that's covered, and let's look at these intro and verse chords here. So um, this is an eight measure progression. It's gonna look like this, bird's eye view. Now I've gotten rid of all the complexity. I don't wanna get super complex with the exact tab out of the gate. <laughs> We'll get there, right? But first, let's look at the chord shapes, where our hands have to go, right? So the first two chords, let's look at these. We're going to have this A major. And this is a sort of interesting voicing where we're taking this sort of triad on the sixth and fifth fret. Now, that's relative to the capo. The capo is on the third fret, but let's pretend this is fret zero. So when I say frets five and six, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? You got to sort of count, just sort of, if you have dots on your guitar, sort of memorize where those are, and it's going to be this triad shape, okay? Now I'm barring the fifth fret with my index finger, and then I am pushing my middle finger down on the sixth fret of the third string, okay? So this is basically coming from this A major shape, but we're not playing all six strings like that, we're just playing the thinnest three. It's a lot easier to pull off, but we wanna combine that open fifth string, okay? Now eventually, I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first, let's get with that chord shape, get comfortable with it, okay? Thumb down here, index, middle, ring fingers on the thinnest three strings. That's gonna be your A, okay? Now the next chord, the cool thing about this is the next chord uses this exact same shape. We're just gonna slide the shape down two frets. So it's third and fourth frets. And then our thumb is gonna go from the fifth string to the sixth string, okay? This is an E minor seven. If you know your D minor chord, and you know your D minor seven, it's just that D minor sh uh, seven shape slid up two frets with an E bass note, okay? Now, the first thing you can do when you learn this song is memorize those two shapes. It's basically one shape. Just memorize the fret assignments. We have our A, and we have our E minor seven. I recommend just sort of getting comfortable with those, going back and forth between them. I sort of silence the strings with my right hand before I play the next one, at least when I'm practicing, right? It just sort of sounds better. It doesn't muddy things up too much. Okay, so those are gonna be your first two chords. Then we're gonna to go to some normal chords, right? Our regular D, D major, right? And then our regular A major. Now when we do our A major here in this fourth measure, notice how I'm doing the thinnest three strings in addition to the fifth string bass note. And if you look at this whole top line, notice how these three fingers right here are on the thinnest three strings for all four chords, okay? Watch these down here, watch these fingers. Okay, these fingers right here stayed on these thinnest three strings. My thumb was bouncing around. It did the fifth string bass note for the A, sixth string bass note for the E minor seven, back to a, up to a fourth string bass note and then back to a fifth string bass note. Okay, now this is gonna be a great thing to practice. Um, after you're done watching this video, you know, you get my song sheet if you want it. And basically, one of the, the first day of practice, what I would recommend is doing is learning these four shapes, go between them, clean sounds. It helps if you silence the strings, like I told you, in between playing. Okay, that's what we wanna get comfortable with first. Now the second line of chords here, we're gonna do an A again. For this A though, we wanna move these three fingers down to the second, third, and fourth string. Whoops. Okay, so it's middle four strings. And then for the E, these fingers are gonna stay on the second, third, and fourth string. Okay, so from A to an E. This is a regular E major shape here. I'm sort of putting my whole finger in that form, even though I'm only playing, um, you know, four of the strings. It's just easier to think about. My hand knows E major. The left hand can do E major pretty good. Put it there, you remember you only pluck the um, second, third, and fourth string plus the bass note. And then we have this G major seven. So this one is the trickiest chord here, in my opinion. Now I have it tabbed out over two measures. For the first measure, you actually don't need the thinnest string yet. So what I recommend doing is putting your left middle and your left ring and the third fret of the third fret of the sixth string and second string respectively. So this is going to be sixth string um, and then third, second, third, fourth strings. Okay, and then the next measure though, bring in your left index finger 
and then you want to pluck the thin as three strings. The reason I am breaking that out into two different chords is number one, you don't need this finger until the second measure of G major seven, okay? So you don't need to rush it into place. It's like a character that doesn't show up until the second act of a play. Technically, if he's late, it probably will be okay, right? I mean, that's a rough metaphor, but you get the idea. So you take those eight chords, two, three, four, one, Here's the cool part. You can take what I just showed you there, and technically you could sing along with all of the verses of this song, right? For example, that first line. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. Suzanne, the plans they made put an end to you. Okay, and if your goal is to sing this, uh, if your goal is to sing this, this is a good exercise to do Because you have to focus on the lyrics and the chords at the same time And that can be pretty tricky And I say that because um, this will really expose how well or unwell you know the chords If you don't know the chords that well, and then you start singing And you don't know the words that well, and you're kind of stretching to get the melody it's all gonna fall apart. So you, that's why you wanna practice the chords by themselves. So do this and repetition, it might seem like you're getting sick of it. I recommend doing it while you're watching TV or something, if you can, or do something to take your mind off things. Just go through, put your uh, fingers through this uh, sort of cycle. Da, 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 D, then to A, then to A again, and to E, and G major seven. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the chord shapes for the intro and the verse. Um, watch the rest of the video, pause it, after, or when you're done, practice that exercise a lot, right? Because I'm going to show you the intro now and the verse. This took me a long time, like many, 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 many days of concerted practice to get the hang of this. Uh, it's the first James Taylor song I've ever learned. I just want to make sure that this isn't something you don't feel like you should be able to pick this up immediately, especially if you're just starting off. It's, it's pretty tricky in places, in my opinion. Okay, so now let's move on to the intro of this song. So I'm assuming now that you know those chord shapes and you know the order of them, okay? Because everything here is going to be a bit trickier when it comes to the flourish of everything. So the intro. Uh, first two measures. This is a lot of fun. Okay, what's going on here? As we know our chord, whoops, we know, we, we know our chord shapes, hopefully. All right, our A and our E minor 7. But here's what we want to do. When we play them, the goal is to basically do this sort of descending arpeggiation, right, the thinnest three strings. But to get there, what we want to do is pinch the, the bass note and then the third string at the same time. But when we pinch the third fret, or the third string, we're going to be two frets down. We're going to be on the fourth fret. So, and we want to slide this to six. So for, slide this from four to six. Practice that by itself if it's new to you. And then know that after you slide it, you're going to want to put that left index finger down, bar that fifth fret, and then do the arpeggiation. And then you do the same thing for the next chord, but you're going to start on six and go down to four. Whoops. Okay. This is a nice little exercise you can do by itself as well. You'll notice that those plucks weren't too clean. You want to work on clean, slow plucks. consistent volume with things. I'm not James Taylor. Okay, but that's basically what we're going to do for those first two chords. And then when we go into this next part, I think this is some of the hardest part of the song if you want to play it like James Taylor. The main idea is we're going to go from this D to the A, and you should know that from the previous exercise. But when we go to the D, a couple things are going on here. One is we're going to sneak in this open D string on the and count just before the one count where the D starts, right? So it's... Right there. I put that and I kind of acted like I was about to jump and scare you or something because you have to kind of think that way when you're playing because you're going to do this sort of D hammer on 
on the next couple notes, right? So in context, okay, pluck the thinnest three strings, hammer on the second fret of the thinnest string, pluck those strings again without the thinnest string fretted, and then hammer on that next note. Now, here's the deal. I call it top of my tab in my song sheet here. It's okay to skip this note, and it's okay to skip this hammer on. When I was playing this uh, for the first week, I didn't even bother with those because they would just throw me off. And if you play it without those, check out how much more approachable it is. Okay. You're just doing a D on the thinnest three strings. You hammer on that thinnest string. Pluck them again without that thinnest string on, and then you just go to an A. Okay. Now for the A, of course, you want to hammer on that second fret of the second string. But with these hammer-ons, um, at first, don't sweat them. I would say do it without them, really. Just get the sort of chord shapes. Okay? One and, uh, one, two, and one, two, three, four. That's the timing of the intro. So it's one, two, three, four. 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 Right? That last part. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you're going to notice there that the A. You're switching to the A on the four count, not the one count. I call this out in my um, song sheet again on page two. The intro and the verse use the same progression, but the only difference is that A in the intro, it's being switched to one quarter note um, earlier than you would expect. I call that out, it's just helpful to know. So basically that's going to be that first, uh, that first couple measures there. And if you want to sneak in that thumb note, and that extra hammer on you can. Let me do it one more time. My advice for this note is think of this note as some, as part of the D and not part of the E minor, right? When you're doing the E minor measure, at this point, when you play that last note of E minor, your brain should think, okay, all hands on deck for getting to D. And you sort of play this as your hand is switching to D. And then you go to that um, A. And again, that last hammer on on the D, I find tricky as well. Um, so don't add that till you're totally comfortable with everything else. All right, now let's look at this A. So the A, you're gonna sort of pluck the thinnest three strings plus the bass note, hammer on the second string. Then you're going to do this, thumb, index, thumb, thumb. And then, this is probably the part of the song I, f I always fear when I'm playing. Second string and third string. A sus4 to A. Pull off that second string, play the third string. Okay, so that whole measure of A, if we start on the four count, Next A, next line. Okay, before we get to the G major there, uh, my advice for that, again, that A, is to take it slow, get used to the chord progression, get used to the, fa like, memorize the notes first and then bring in the timing. Um, so it's basically four and one and two and three and four and one and two, three, Um, it's a tricky, tricky, tricky part. Let me go back, go on though, because I want to talk about um, the rest of the intro and then the, the verse. The verse has a similar A riff, which I actually find a bit easier, but between what I just showed you and what's in my song sheet and what I'm going to show you in the verse, you'll probably be in pretty good shape. 
Now the G major seven here at the end of the verse, this is tricky as well. So what's going on there is we're basically gonna do an appreciation, sixth string, fourth, third, second, sixth to fourth to sixth, and then we finally use this left index finger. So see how this left index finger is coming in so late? That's why you don't need to rush this finger down when you're switching to the G major seven, okay? So basically, thumb, index, middle, ring, thumb, index, thumb, and then ring, thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb, middle, index, and then I basically use thumb on that fourth fret note right there. Or you, on the last three notes, you could do ring, mid, middle, index. Uh, this is a tricky part. I recommend doing this um, with a sense of get totally comfortable with the chords, get comfortable playing around. And I did make a separate lesson, which I mentioned earlier, getting started with the fire and rain chord shapes, where I show you some exercises you can do based on these shapes. Check out that video if these are giving you trouble, because I do talk about this chord quite a bit, and I show you a sample exercise you can do. So the full intro would sound like this. time slowly okay that last note very last note of the intro you can skip that one as well and the reason why is what do you play after the intro you play the verse so that means you have to jump from this To this for the verse. You have to jump there pretty quick. You only have like an eighth note to do it. So if you skip that last note, it buys you an extra eighth note of time, which is a lot. So that's how you play the intro. It's tricky. Let's look at the verse next because the verse is similar. Uh, I think it's easier in a way, but it does have a cool A riff, which we're going to use um, in the chorus as well. Okay, so the verse of this song, um, I'm going to assume you already know those chord shapes. The A, the E minor 7, the D, to the A. Stay on the A again, then to the D, then to the G major 7. Okay, if you don't know those chord shapes already, rewind, because earlier in the video I showed you how to play those, and I talked about the importance of getting comfortable with that order of things, right? You want to learn that progression back and forth before you try any of this complex fretting. Now, the cool part about um, the verse is you're singing, so you, you're not going to be as showy with what you're picking, right? And it's really hard to hear his guitar on the album, so what I recommend doing is this sort of pattern. My sort of do default pattern with this is this, right? Bass note third string, second and first string together, back to third string. So if I just did the A, this is a sort of pattern I enjoy doing. Maybe he's playing this or something slightly different. I'm not really too concerned with what he's doing exactly. I think this, this seems very fitting to me. So we're gonna do A to the E minor, seven to the D. To the D, same pattern. The strings are different, but it's the same pattern. For bass note, third string, second and first together. We're gonna to hammer on that thinnest string, then back to the third string. And then we get to the two measures of A, and this is where the A riff comes in. And this A riff is... You hear this throughout the song, right? Um, I heard this in other James Taylor songs as well. So how to do this is it's basically going to be the bass note, the third string, the thinnest two strings, hammer on that second string note, then we go back to the third string, then we play the open two strings, thinnest two strings, and then we're going to do the bass note plus the thinnest three, but hammer on that second fret on the second string. Okay? And there's actually two different ways you can play this. You can play this with your, your right finger hands on the bass note plus 
strings one, two, and three. That sounds like this. Or you can do it with the same bass note, but these fingers on strings two, three, and four. Both are valid. They both have the same timing too. Now the timing of these, one, two, and three, and four. One, and two, three, four. That's the middle four strings. Or if you did the thin, th thinnest three, one, two, then three, and four. One, and two, three, four. Um, for me, what was helpful to remember was that you're gonna hit those thinnest two strings an eighth note earlier than you normally do, right? Because normally you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, one, two, right? One, two, and three. That's coming a little bit earlier than than normal. Um, so that's how you're gonna do that A riff. This is one you wanna practice as well, but if you're just getting started with things, don't let this hang you up, right? Pencil it in is okay, gotta learn that. But if you just sort of want something easy, you can replace that measure of A with that. Just fifth string, third string, then this two, third string. Just do the regular pattern. Susan, the plans we made did an end to you. Okay, so for the, um, for the A in the fourth measure, and the A in the fifth measure, you can just default to the simpler version of A if you want. And then for the E, bass note plus second, third, and fourth string. And then the G major seven. So this is slightly easier than what we had before. So same pattern on the sixth string plus second, third, and fourth string. But then in the last measure, what I'm gonna do is put my index finger down and then do a pinch, right? Pinch, second, third, first, bass, second, third, so. Okay, so that's going to be the verse tab. Let me play that for you a few times here as well. I'll do it with and without singing. singing now. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. Suzanne, the plans I made put an end to you. And then, I walked out this morning, and I wrote down this song. I just can't remember That's all it is, uh, that's all there is to it for the verse. Um, that A riff is tricky, tricky, tricky. It took me a while to get a hang of that, so don't let it scare you. And same, same with the G major seven. If you're just getting started with this, I recommend that other video I made to show you some exercises to get over the hump of that. You, you don't wanna be thinking about where your fingers go. You kinda have to be really confident with things. Okay, so talked about the verse. Now let's move on to the chorus. And the chorus is gonna use some different chords. I think it's a bit, um, it's a bit easier than the intro and the verse because Number one, that A riff that we just learned in the in the verse, you're gonna use that again here if you already know it. If you don't know it, you can just skip it and I'll show you how to do that. So what I wanna do here is show you some, uh, the simplest possible way to do the chorus. Then I'll show you how I like to play it, which is a bit more complicated. Then I'm gonna show you how most of the other teachers on YouTube teach it. I don't like teaching it this way though. No, let me say that again. I don't like playing it this way because I just don't find it's as, it's harder to do. You're gonna have a, a weird bass note transition with your pinky. It doesn't sound as good in my opinion when I play it. So um, I like these simpler versions, but of course I wanna show it to you here and it is in my song sheet. So um, let's look at this now. So uh, for context, the chorus is, you know. Yeah, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen da 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 now, the simplest way to do this is we're gonna go, we're gonna have this sequence we play three times. We're gonna be on D for one measure, right? One, two, three, four. Then this B minor seven. 
Now I'm playing this. I recommend this easy way to play it, which is basically you can play your D, right? Keep your ring finger where it is, and then you just put these two fingers, uh, second fret of the fifth string with your index, and then second fret of the third string with your middle. And you leave the um, thinnest string open, okay? This is like a B minor seven. And then we're gonna go to the A for two measures. Okay, so the simple version. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. Repeat it. I've seen summer days. Da, 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 da. Get comfortable with this. Play it till you're bored of it. Da, 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 da. Good thing I'm not uh, singing like James Taylor. Okay. Um, now, how do, how, do, how do I like to play it? Well, there's this idea of a descending bass note. If we jump right to the advanced version, I'll just show you this real quick. Is D, uh, D with a C sharp bass note, right? So we're gonna reach our pinky over, and then we're gonna do a B minor seven, like I showed you, and then this B minor seven with the E bass note, and then we go to the A with the full A, um, the full A riff I already showed. So that bass note. That's what you really want to get in there. That D over C sharp, B minor seven, E bass note, A. Now there's two different ways to play this. So one way you could do it is by effectively barring the second fret. So you do the D, you do the D over C sharp. It just sounds kind of muddy and dissonant. I don't. That's why I don't love it. Then you keep your ring finger there, bar the whole second fret, fifth string, or second third. That's your D, B minor seven. It's almost like a D over B also. And then um, the B minor seven over E. You keep the same chord shape with your left hand. So for this one, for the B minor seven, and for the B minor seven over E, your left hand is saying the same thing. So that's one way to do it. Again. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. Um, again, I just don't like to do that. I don't, maybe I can't play it as smoothly, it, but it doesn't sound as satisfying to me. So what I like to do is this version right here, which is for the D, I just sort of do the arpeggio. Right? I seen five and I seen, and then I just do a single pluck of B minor seven and a single pluck of B minor seven over E. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I like to silence the strings with my right hand after the B minor seven and after the B minor seven over E, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. I've seen sunny days I thought would never end. Da, 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 da. Okay, so that's your options there for the chorus. Again, do the simple version. Or you can do it like I do it. Or the James Taylor version. Uh, pick your poison there and um, do it three times for the three lines of the chorus. And then for the last line of the chorus, we're going to do this sort of um, ending tag or whatever it's called. So this is effectively a walk down between G, D over F sharp, and E minor seven, but he's playing it in his own way. Um, how I like to, and this is how I like to do it as well with my finger positions, is I do ring finger on this third fret note for all the chords, okay? And you just put your middle finger here for the G. These three fingers are second, third, and fourth string always. So, and then you're gonna put these two fingers right here on your D over F sharp positions. So second, open, open, second. Keep your ring finger down. And then you move these same two fingers right here into the fourth and fifth string. This is like the shallow, um, the shallow from a star is born. Same thing, this left ring finger stays put and then these three fingers are all doing E minor, D over F sharp, G. It's a nice little exercise. Anyway, uh, the chorus ending tab. The G, 
D over F sharp, E minor 7, and that's for one full measure. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, so it's 2. We're going to strum that. So for context, how this chorus ending is um, comes up with the lyrics is, But I always thought that I'd see you again. And then for the A sus2, he's going to strum for four measures total, right? I do a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. Now let me play the verse in full for you and show you how it sounds. The chorus, I meant the chorus, the chorus, the chorus. Let me put this over here so I don't forget the words. So when I play this, I'm going to do the three lines of the chorus. I'm going to do the simple version first, the preferred, my favorite version second the James Taylor version third, then I'll do the ending tag, okay? But hopefully it comes off as one cohesive chorus. So here's what that would sound like. So. And I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days I thought would never end At the da 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 But I always thought I You look down upon me, Jesus. All right, so that's all you're going to need for every section of this song. Um, again, I do have this song sheet. It's six pages. It's an absolute labor of love. If you enjoyed this lesson and watched this far, I recommend getting it. And then on page six of this chord sheet, I have everything tabbed out in just one page. It's a nice way to get sort of the intro, the verse, and both chorus riffs all on one page. It's great for practicing. Um, in addition to the previous five pages, which give you everything in great detail. So, uh, hey, to learn this in full, check out my website. A few reasons. Number one, I have the other video talking about the chord shapes, helping you sort of get really comfortable with them, showing you some exercises I made up to help learn them. And I actually used those, and I was learning this song. Number two is I have a full playthrough on my website of me doing the entire song. So that's all there for you at my website, playsongnotes.com. Um, and of course, there is the link to the song sheet that's there and a few other videos. There's one of James Taylor explaining this song. Um, he calls it a lesson. It's not really a lesson. He just kind of plays it with like close-ups of himself. But that's all there for you. Um, thanks to all of you who have requested this one. This was the most requested song um, in the recent poll I did on my Patreon page. So thanks to all of you who are supporting me. Uh, it means so much, and it literally is keeping the lights on here as I do this full-time. So uh, thanks all very much, and... Uh, Good luck with this one. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.